Can't write in the thing. Project So this slide is at set. So this slide is the balance sheet of liabilities and equity. Um, on these slides, we're going to go through and talk about total liabilities, current liabilities, accumulated either comprehensive loss accounts. Um, for the equity side, we're going to talk about total shareholders' equity, non-controlling uh, interest, and retained earnings. So this slide here is common size balance sheet for liabilities and shareholders' equity. So we're going to compare. Uh, I don't know what this slide's about, to be honest. So I don't know what slide is the common size income statement. So you can see from the slide here that there is a drastic change in the uh, earnings from continual operations before income taxes. It went from 5% to 18%. And there's a steady decrease of net earnings from uh, operations. It went from 16% to now 14%. Um, also, another one to look at here is the cost of products sold. Uh, there wasn't much change here, it only went from 49% to 48%. This is Unilever's balance sheet. If you can see, the goodwill is the biggest one that went up. It went from 29.5% to 31.4%. Because of this, um, Unilever is very involved in the community. So they built um, Goodwill within the community doing different service projects. So that's why the Goodwill increased. Um, another big one is the intangible assets also went up. It went from 12.4% to 14.8%. Current assets, they're cash and cash equivalent went up from 5.6% to 7.3%.
and this is the liabilities and owner's equity. As you can see, liabilities as a whole went up by almost 4%. There was an increase in the financial liabilities on Unilever's account. They, this could be for many different reasons. They could have acquired something else or um, just have more accounts payable that they have due. Owner's equity, as you can see, um, decreased slightly. It went from 36.6% to 3.4% or 31.4%, which is a decrease um, because they spent more money on different assets. Now we're going to the income state, the common size income statement for Unilever. As you can see, there was the operating profit actually went down due to different reasons. Um, the profit before taxation went down as well because of um, sales went up, but because of different costs that they were incurring, it caused um, the pr overall profit to go down. The growth rates that were key to the different effects that happened were um, total assets went up by 15.4%. The reason why this went up is because current assets went up by 14% and non-current assets went up by 16%. The two main ones underneath those current assets, the main one was cash equivalent and cash was 22.7% increase and then for non-current assets was the goodwill went up by 50 percent for total liabilities it went up 24.9 percent because of this this occurred because current liabilities went up by 31.8 percent and non-current liabilities went up by 17.4 percent financial liabilities were key for the current liabilities of why it went up it almost um, doubled. Um, and then for non-current liabilities, deferred tax liabilities caused the increase with 27.8% increase. Total equity went down by 1%. Now we're going to talk about Hunter and Gamble's financial ratios. So first, let's a look at short-term liquidity. Analyzing Procter & Gamble's short-term liquidity based on its current ratio of 0.805 in 2011, increasing from 0.773 in 2010, this ratio is unusually low. Procter & Gamble has over 50 brand names, and a large portion of their current assets is their inventory, which is the least liquid asset, and thus can't be seen as assets assets are less than liability. Since the firm has an abundance of Inventory, they rely on selling that in order to be able to pay for their short term debt. Yeah. Next, we'll move on to asset management efficiency. In 2010, Procter & Gamble had an inventory turnover of 12 to 15 that dropped to 10.99 million in 2011. A low inventory turnover means the firm is selling and restocking their inventory about 10 to 11 times a year. With 33 days in sales inventories, means that Procter & Gamble sells their inventory pretty quickly instead of it just sitting in their buildings and losing money. The inventory turnover was a low number, but P&G invests a lot in their inventory and products. Collecting on sales 12 times is a relatively low number and is why you're seeing assets are lower than liability. Next is Procter & Gamble's profitability. In Procter & Gamble's case, the firm earns about 14 cents in profit for every dollar in sales which is less than what they were earning in 2010, which was 16 cents. For every dollar in equity, Procter & Gamble generates about 17 cents in profit, a reduction from 2010 of about 20 cents. This is still a high number, meaning consumers have faith and belief in this company and interest rates must be low. Lastly, we'll see Procter & Gamble's market performance. EPS, or earning per share, shows how much earnings the firms receive after dividing its net income by the shares outstanding. Comparing to the standard and Forbes 500 average price to earnings ratio of 19, Procter & Gamble has a 
PPP ratio of 13.63 in 2011, a jump from 13.33 in 2010. Sometimes companies with lower PE ratios are a safer investment than those with higher PE ratios. This can mean a more consistent market price on stocks or interest rates do not fluctuate as much, creating less risk. Next we're going to talk about Unilever's ratios. Unilever's current ratio shows 0.7, which is relatively low considering the company usually wants at least one, and it is down from the previous year 2010 at 0.192. This could suggest that Unilever has low liquidity, increased borrowing, or has a large inventory. When looking at Unilever's balance sheet, there is no large increase in financial liability. Unilever's inventory was one third of their current assets for 2011. Since inventory can take on to liquidity, the current ratio would appear lower. Unilever's financial leverage and coverage for claims and interest shows that Unilever covers its interest bill 16.83 times over for the year 2011. Their profitability margin is 10%, meaning for every dollar in sales, they earn 0.10 in profit. And that this is a good profit. For 2011, Unilever has a 9.710 in assets. So every um, one euro, Unilever receives 0.97 of one euro. Unilever uses its assets in an efficient way to generate profit. For 2011, earnings per share was 1.82, which is lower than 2010's earnings per share of 1.86. The highest was in 2008 when earnings per share was 2.31. Unilever's earnings per share for 2011 were 18.17, which is higher than 2011's, which was 16.44. Unilever's assets sell 18 times the earnings. Unilever has potential for growth, which is why investors are willing to pay more than its current earnings. This concludes our uh, presentation on Procter & Gamble and Unilever's financial performance.